Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're enjoying your New Year's Eve. And of course, with 2022 coming to an end, we should reflect on some of the comics that have come out this year, both the good and the bad. And ask anyone that knows me, they will tell you that I like to tear out the band-aid. So we're gonna start with, of course, the top five most disappointing comics of 2022. Number five. Amazing Spider-Man issue 9. This is a weird one to put on the list, but yeah, this is a kind of a disappointment. It's a tie-in to the Hellfire Gala, which keep in mind the Hellfire Gala ended in July, while this came out in September, so this thing was really late, and it tells us Spider-Man's side of the story. Now, to explain what the Hellfire Gala is, it's this big event that's hosted in Krakoa, the mutant nation that the X-Men have been living in since the Hickman run. The gala is meant to show a series of fashion and interest and showing the people the wonders of Krakoa while secretly doing some very shady things to uh, get ahead from the other nations. And in this story, we see that MJ has been kidnapped by Mara McTaggart. Yeah, she turned evil during the Pikmin run, it's a whole thing. And MJ has actually been recently helping the mutants out, which is why Mara and the mutant hating organization Orchis are after her. Peter teams up with Logan to help find her, and it's pretty complicated since, yeah, Peter in this story is kind of being an ass, which, yeah, you get it, he still cares for MJ even though they're not together at this point, but yeah, by this point he should know what to do in this situation. That being, not being a total jackass. Honestly, this tie-in just felt unnecessary, since it really doesn't establish anything except reminding us that yeah, Pierre and MJ aren't together because of some mysterious situation that happened in six months. The stuff with Orchis didn't really go anywhere, and, and though some of this could come into play in the next big Spider-Man X-Men story, yeah, I'll, I'll just say right now, I don't really count on it, and if it does show up, I I don't believe it's gonna be that satisfying. Either way, this was uh, not a great issue and a pretty lazy tie in. Number four. Critical Role, The Mighty Nine Origins, Caleb Wittigast. The greatest sin for this one is that it was just boring. I am sorry to any Mighty Nine fans, but I just found this absolutely boring. I have yet to actually check out the Mighty Nine Critical Role videos, but yeah, if this is how they all play out, yeah, I'm, I'm not interested. From this title, it's a origin story regarding one of the characters of Mighty Nine, that being Caleb, and yeah, I, I don't know what else to say, I just was not interested. It starts off promising by introducing our main character and kind of showing how the world of magic works here, but yeah, as the story goes on, it just kind of loses motion, and by the time anything interesting happens again, it just kind of stops, and yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just I'm just not into this one. Sorry to any Mighty Nine fans, but this did not make me interested in continuing the series. I mean, if you like it, that's fine, but for me, yeah, just no. Number three. Shadow War. Now this one really disappointed me right here because this was all built up in the pages of the Josh Williams and Robin run, which I just freaking loved back when it first started in 2021. Hell, I even said that I wanted to have it be number one in my top five favorite list last year. This could easily have been number one for me. I have been enjoying the series from beginning to end. But the storyline was still going, so it didn't feel right to have it be number one. But after that storyline, we did find out the new character of Respawn was actually the son of Deathstroke and Talia. Not in the way that you think, though. Turns out that Ra's al Ghul decided that though Deathstroke was not worthy to be the new Demon's Head or even have an heir to the Demon's Head, he did believe that he was useful. So he did decide to make kind of a proto version of the Heretics, the crazy clone army that Talia and Ra's tried to make back in Batman Inc. Unfortunately, though technically being his grandson, he did not find respawn as anything less than a weapon and did some really messed up things to him. Things that Deathstroke would be royally pissed off about and decide to go to war with Rage. Though not in the way that originally was planned, since something goes down that starts a war with the League of Assassins and Deathstroke's organization, all while Batman and Robin try to work together and stop the two factions. On paper, it sounds pretty cool and not totally out of the ordinary when it comes to Batman's adventures, but with a combination of really inconsistent art, out of character moments, and just massive continuity errors when it comes to stuff like Bruce and Damien's relationship at this point in the series. It really falls flat on its face. Now, they would kind of try this again in the new Batman vs. Robin storyline, which is really good, but that doesn't mean that this story has gone even less disappointing. Number 2 
Spider-Man Beyond Volume 4. Now, this was just a freaking mess. Now, Spider-Man Beyond actually started off pretty well, with the return of Ben Riley taking over for Spider-Man after Peter Parker got injured. But, unlike last time Ben took the mantle of Spider-Man, he now has backup in the form of the Beyond Corporation, a company that actually took over the rights of Spider-Man after Peter Parker's company, yeah, long story, Peter Parker owned a company, well, Doc Ock owned the company first, and then Peter had, but whatever, it, it fell apart, and Doc Ock actually patented Spider-Man, so when Parker Industries got liquidated, the legal rights of Spider-Man actually wound up going to Beyond, which, yeah, you can see how that probably would be a big issue at some point. And the series was doing so well tackling those issues, and really establishing Ben Riley as a character, while also reintroducing his love Janine, and showing that, yeah, despite the fact that he's a clone, he is very different from Peter. Unfortunately, the series ends on a really crappy note that just feels like a massive F you to anyone who might have been a fan of Ben Riley. As we find out that Ben is actually suffering from memory issues because the company is actually editing his mind, and turning Ben into into a person that is completely unrecognizable. All that's going on, we have a new villain known as Queen Goblin going around raising hell. Besides the art, everything else just falls apart. Characters are either forgotten or just kind of left in a really messed up space. And the story just becomes very unkind to Ben, leading him into becoming, well, well essentially an edgelord's wet dream. And it's not getting better. This comic is anything but amazing. Now for the dishonorable mentions. Okay, I'm putting this message in both videos, but just letting you guys guys know, I decided to stop after talking about 5 through 2 on both videos and just wait for me to get over this bug so I wouldn't sound so worn out when talking about the honorable mentions and the dishonorable mentions and the number ones. So if you're wondering why I immediately sound so clear, that's why. DC's The Monkey Prince had a pretty weak opening, but as the first storyline progressed, it got better. I do think the whole Batman connection was just kind of weird, and I'm not the biggest fan of the art style, but meh, it's harmless. Dark Crisis Young Justice. I'm gonna be honest here, I just kind of gave up on that one. Uh, I just felt like it was getting kind of ham-fisted on what it was trying to say, and I'm kind of left wondering why why exactly do you guys keep Connor, Sir Boy, Tim as Robin, and Bart as Impulse? Because it doesn't feel like anyone actually knows what to do. I know some people are probably thinking, well, if you gave up on it, why not just have it on the list? But I feel like it's unfair to put it on the list when I haven't read the whole thing. Marvel's Dark Web. Not gonna lie, I'm really tempted to put it on the list, but the story isn't done yet. But yeah, know for a fact that I really don't care for this story. It's just wannabe 90s edgelord soul eater bullshit. And as I mentioned with the whole Spider-Man Beyond thing, not a fan of what they're doing with Ben Riley, and also really inconsistent. Zeb Wells actually wrote both these stories, so what the hell? But yeah, I'm probably going to cover in the future. And I will not be kind in any way, just letting you know. And the number one most disappointing comic of 2022 is... DC's War for Earth 3. Now, I mentioned this before, but I'll say it again. I am a fan of the Dark Mirror universe. I think it's a fun concept, and one of the prime examples is DC storyline Earth 2, which reintroduced the crime syndicate, the dark versions of the Justice League. And I was really happy to see them make a major comeback by getting their own solo series and playing a part in the Suicide Squad comic. But when it was time for them to have their own mini event, man, this just was like, I don't know what to say. This is like a combination of disappointing, annoying, and just plain stupid. It's essentially a three-way crossover with the Suicide Squad, the Flash, and Titans Academy. Yeah, remember Titans Academy? Last year's number one? You're probably wondering why the hell they're here. Well, yeah, good question. I honestly have no freaking clue. They don't add anything to the story, and yeah, in fact, Flash doesn't even make sense either. I know speedsters have connections to the Speed Force, but really... Wally didn't need to be in this story. I mean, the plot's not an interesting, with Amanda Waller actually going to Earth 3 to take control over it, but yeah, I'm sorry. It was just bad. The Crime Syndicate are not interesting characters, which is very criminal, no pun intended, since their solo series did a great job reintroducing them. But in here, to be perfectly honest, with the exception of this really weird joke of Owlman being into bondage, I cannot remember anything that they did that was actually interesting. This was nothing but a drag to read and yeah I am just disappointed hence this is number one <sighs> sometimes I wish I was being paid for this anyway now for part two